and I always compare it to a jigsaw puzzle. You look at the box of a jigsaw puzzle, it's beautiful, right? Uh -huh. You get this whole... Here comes, this is a great analogy, Jaron. I'm so glad you said this about the jigsaw puzzle. This is going to tell you, you're not going to get it, but I'm going to tell you this is why you don't cherry pick. This is one example of why you don't cherry pick the Bible, especially the Old Testament, a book that spans thousands of years. Flowery scene with a bridge and things. But when you get it home and you open that box, it looks like garbage because mm -hmm. it's just all the little pieces. Little and pieces. as long as there are little pieces and you keep separating them in different piles and you keep throwing some over here and knocking some over there. Uh -huh. Like you, cherry picking. Your puzzle look like shit. Right. Every single day, your, your puzzle is going to look like shit until you start putting the pieces together. And if you look at any one piece, there there's go. nothing impressive about it. So nothing impressive about it. Here's this cherry picking. This is a great example. Thank you, Jaron, for this. So you grab any one puzzle piece and pick it up and you look at it and you go, oh, what is this? What is that? Until you put the whole puzzle together, then you see the full picture. That's why the Bible implores you to, you have to take the full counsel of God to make, this is why you are so stupid in your uh, characterizations of God. You're clueless of the big picture. Or a more sinister take is that you are being dumb on purpose, meaning you are deceiving on purpose. Look at it, it's not impressive. Do that with all the pieces, do, nothing's with, impressive. But do that with all the cherry pick pieces, Jaron. But if we ever started to bring people together, which clearly it seems like the powers that be, that's their main goal, keep us separated. And so you are separating flat earth right here, Jaron, by picking on the Bible, which there's a huge percentage. I don't know what percentage of flat earthers are Christian. And, and by the way, I don't know one Christian personally who's a flat earther. I'll take that back. I know one out of scores of Christians that I know locally where I live. And I brought the scriptures up to them. They deny it. They deny every scripture. And, and one I like to use is Joshua 10, 12, and 13, where, now, granted, that scripture by itself is not flat earth, but it's clearly a geocentric scripture. It says that the night and day is created not by the rotation of the earth, but by the sun moving. Okay? So, uh, yeah, Christians I know don't even believe God's word. So, I, I think they want us to be that jumbled up puzzle box. And so you are the one who is trying to divide out Christians, like a gatekeeper. Like, you know, they knew that uh, the flat earth was going to break uh, decades ago when the internet started. They probably, the writing was on the wall, but they couldn't stop it uh, like they can now with all the algorithms and stuff. And so... They needed to get ahead of the story because they knew people would turn to the Bible. I can't tell you how many people on my channel over the years have said, thank you so much. Your explanation of the sun and how it rises and sets and, and whatever brought me to the Bible because now I, you know, that was a stumbling block for me and they get it now and they came to the Bible. This is what they're afraid of. And Jaron is acting as a gatekeeper, either um, intentionally or it's a spiritual thing. But, uh, you know, and as money focused as he is, and the fact that his channel is so big, 170 whatever thousand subscribers, they're not stopping him. But man, you start talking about uh, the King James Bible, and woo, watch your, uh, and Flat Earth together, and watch your, uh, <laughs> watch your channel get blocked quick. But if we start putting those pieces together, mm -hmm. then I think that uh, the power of God multiplies. Exactly, Jaron. I don't think I could have said it better myself. Um, yes, when you do more than just grab a couple of uh, handfuls, you know, five, ten cherry-picked pieces, it makes the, the puzzle makes no sense at all. You, you prove that a great point, but when you put the whole puzzle together, then you can see what's going on. And if you loved this puzzle, you would dig into it and do it, and not just cherry-pick it. So clearly you have an agenda, and uh, that's what we're seeing. You're trying to make people hate the Bible, and that's why you're not digging into it. Because, first of all, yeah, I mean, you have to love that book. That's a hard book to get in and read, but you got to have a love for it. And, and like I said, every single point you've made up that you've come up with, I can debunk. You, uh, tell me your point, I, uh, and I'll get into that. We're good. So anyway, that's my two cents, and now we'll uh, let Dave go and tell us his opinion. We'll get to Dave. <laughs> I'll, I'll get to Dave.